question that I'm often asked about on my PS5 related content is which version of the PS5 people should purchase. And I'll be honest, I thought that the answer to that question was really straightforward. But on talking to people in the comments of my videos, I realized that there's still a little bit of confusion about which model is right for you. So in this video, I'm going to quickly break down the difference between the two console options that are available to you, and then explain the pros and cons of each, as well as advising what console I think you should look to buy, dependent on your specific situation. So for the sake of clarity, let's be clear about what your options are when buying a PS5. Right now, in November of 2021, there are two options to choose from, the Disc Edition and the Digital Edition. And the clue to the difference between the two is in the name. The Disc Edition of the PS5 has a disc drive built into it, while the Digital Edition does not. Beyond that, there are no differences between the two consoles. You've got the same CPU, the same GPU, the same memory, and the same internal storage size and capability across the two consoles. You're not getting one that's more powerful than the other, or one that's got more internal storage, or anything like that. It literally is all about that disk drive. There's no slim version of the PS5 right now, no pro version either. So if you're deciding on which console to purchase, the key difference is going to be around how much that disk drive means to you, and whether or not you can live without it, or whether you'd actually prefer to live without it. Let's break that down a little. The key benefit to a disk drive is that it can of course read discs. The PS5 disk drive can read PS5 games, but it can also read and play PS4 games, various types of Blu-ray discs including 4K, Ultra HD and DVDs, so it covers a pretty wide range of media types. If you're someone who owns a wide range of disc-based media and you want the option to play those on your PS5, you have to go for the disc-based console, you don't have any other option. A benefit beyond having a disc-based media collection is that games are installed on your PS5 console, and the files that are needed to do this are pretty large. Every game comes with an installation file, a core file that's delivered to your console and installed on the hard drive, and then updated via the web as patches are released for the game. That installation file can be huge. Let's say for example that you've got a 45 gig installation file. You need to get that file onto your PS5. With the digital edition, you can either download that file from the cloud, which is of course going to be dependent on your internet connection, or you store it on an external hard drive and transfer it over when you want to access it. This is quicker, but it's still not exactly quick. If you own a disc-based PS5, you've got both of those options, but you also have the option of buying a disc copy of a game and accessing the file via the disc. Now your console will still have to install the game from the disc, so you're not saving hard drive space or anything like that. The console still fully installs the game onto its internal hard drive. It's just obviously quicker for most people to install a game from a disc than it is to install it from the cloud. Although do keep in mind, most games will then need to download an update and that is done via the cloud. So a poor internet connection is gonna be troublesome for you regardless of which console you own. That said, if you have data caps on your internet, for example, the disc-based console could be your best option. A major benefit to owning the disc-based version of the console is your ability to make the most of deals that can be found outside of the PlayStation Network. If you go to your local game store or supermarket or secondhand sale and find something for a really good deal, you can purchase the physical copy of the game at a potentially really good price, something that isn't available to owners of the digital version. That said, those of us who use the digital edition of the console can still benefit from deals. The PSN store has deals running all the time, and it's well worth checking back every couple of weeks or so to see what's available. I've managed to amass a pretty good collection, although like any digital collection, there's an argument to be had about whether or not I ever actually own any of these games. I've technically got them on a super long-term rental. Oh, and in case you were wondering, if you buy a disc copy of a game, you will have to insert that disc each and every time you play the game. Not because the PS5 is reading anything from the disc each time, it's an anti-piracy feature. It's to stop you from buying a game, installing it on your machine, then returning the disc for a refund and being able to still play the game. So lots of reasons to own a disc-based console. You might be wondering why anyone would go for the digital edition. Well, I went for the digital edition, so there are those of us out there who prefer this over the disc version for a few different reasons. For me personally, I don't like owning physical media. I used to have a huge collection of DVDs, for example, and I sold them all off years ago. Not for a lot of money, really. I definitely made a net loss. And that was simply because it was clear back then that streaming was the way forward, and my DVDs, which were much poorer video quality than the streaming alternatives, would just be gathering dust on my shelves. The same with my CDs. I prefer the minimalism of a home that doesn't have large digital media collections, personally, so I had no use for a disc-based console. 
I also think, and this is of course my personal opinion, that the digital edition looks better than the disc based. I like that it doesn't have the notch at the bottom for the disc drive. It's just aesthetically much more pleasing to my eyes than the disc based console personally. It is also technically cheaper, to the tune of almost £100 here in the UK, which is a sizable difference in cost. But the reason why I say technically cheaper is because both versions of the console are still borderline impossible to get hold of, even now in November of 2021. So with that in mind, even digital editions of the console are selling online for twice the retail price of the disc edition, and you might find yourself in a situation where you've got an opportunity to purchase the version of the console that you don't want for a reasonable price. And if that's the case, I guess you have to ask yourself, is the wrong PS5 better than no PS5 at all? Only you can answer that question. So there you go, that's an explanation of the difference between the two PS5 console versions with a breakdown of which version I think you should consider based on your needs. What about you? Have you been able to get hold of a PS5? If yes, which one did you get? Was it the one that you wanted? Or are you still struggling like so many other people seem to be? Drop me a comment and let's talk about it. And as ever, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.